Hi, this is a short video on my welding table project. This is something I've been wanting to start for quite some time, but I really want the DynaTorch CNC plasma cut up and running to make the project a little bit easier. This is my existing table, it's just terrible, it's just a piece of scrap. This is the arc station from Miller, which I really like the design of. And also the Pro Build Strong Hand Table, again fantastic pieces of equipment, but very expensive. So I decided to go ahead and design my own table. I use a product called Aspire from Vetric. I find it very quick and easy to use and you can export the designs in DXF files. You can use these in many other software programs to manipulate them further if you so desire. Once I have my DXF file I'll bring it into SheetCam and then I can plan all my inside outside cuts, the lead in points etc and compile it as G code. I'll then export that as a tap file and bring it into the DynaTorch control software. Uh, here you can see the uh, torch is starting to cut. This is a quarter inch mild steel plate. It has a little bit of surface rust on there, but nothing that the plasma cut is going to worry about too much. I'm using a PowerMax 45 plasma cutter, which can cut half an inch with a mechanized torch. And this is a 45 amp torch. It's standard 45 amp consumables. The rapids on the Dyne Torch as well are, are very good. I think the X and Y axis combined rapid is 700 inches per minute. I did cut the plate in an odd sequence, uh, but I want to retain these one and a half inch circles uh, later on in the project, so it, it will make sense if you continue to watch to the end. The cut's going to take a few minutes, so I won't expect you to sit there and watch it at re regular speed. So I'm going to speed up to 200% until the end of the cut. So the cut's finished and we'll just have a quick look at how it's worked out. The curve is about 65 thou, I think I've measured out at the moment. Uh, I'm still playing with the settings so I'm tweaking as we go along, making sure that the, the bevel of the, the cut is acceptable. So I'm just going to chip the dross off the back of the plate. Very easy to break away, you can either use a paint scraper or chipping hammer as you see here. The Hypertherm PowerMax series of plasma cutters are very, very clean if they're set correctly, and I think they're probably one of the best plasma cutters on the market. So that's the finished plate with my little one and a half inch circles. 
So another look at my fantastic old welding table. It's not great and you probably shouldn't have your welder underneath your welding table. Uh, there's a lot of dirt and dust that drops down and it's not going to do your welder any good. So that, that will be moving. It's there con for convenience rather than any other purpose. Uh, but this little SP135 has been brilliant. It's been through hell and back and it's, it's never failed me once. So I've just cleaned up the side of the uh, I think it's two inch square stock just so I can get a, a reasonable weld on the side of that and I'll go ahead and fit the plate over top making sure it's nice and square to the table so the X fits exactly inside the frame and the, the left hand side slot is obviously over to one side so I can access that give me a bit more room so I'm just again making sure it's nice and square Okay, I'm just going to tack the tabletop on. I, I don't really want to clamp it down. I want to keep the plate as flat as possible. It's a, a reasonably flat plate when I started. I don't want to heat it up too much. I just want to just tack it on lightly. I'm not doing any really heavy work on here so the likelihood of it breaking free is, is pretty slim. I should have cleaned the welds a little bit better than I did. There's lots of paint and rust. But perseverance and just put some heat in there and it will tack on nicely. This little 110 welder it's it's phenomenal what you can actually weld with a 110 bolt regardless of what people will tell you. So this is one of my offcut circles from earlier. I had to weld in part of the edge where the lead in was in the wrong spot but that's fine. I then went ahead and drilled a, a hole ready for mounting the stud. So this is my strong hand clamp that I plan to use and I've took a, a bolt that fits the thread and just welded that in the uh, in the blank and this will nicely screw on to the clamp giving it a lot more support underneath and the idea is it will just go through that hole, slide along the table. The width of that slot is wide enough for the clamp to turn 180 degrees in either direction. So I've got lots of clamping options. Okay, I'm just removing the clamp. And you can just see the bottom of it there. And just in case you were confused about what clamping is, here's a piece of metal being clamped. Okay, round stock. If you haven't got some V-blocks, then you could just put it into the slot if it's short enough. And my clamp should have a little round stock adapter on the top there, but I've just got the regular regular shoe on there. But it clamps fairly fairly soundly. So this is the completed table. I think the whole job cost me less than fifty bucks. I think it still was thirty, the clamp was about fourteen dollars, and it's a vast improvement. Well that's the table completed. If you'd like to see more updates in the future then please subscribe to my channel. But in the meantime, thanks very much for watching.